been given in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. You see, it was his goal for him to separate people who had a heart to understand from those who did not. He wanted to separate those who were just hanging around for the free meals and the miracles from those who were actually after his heart. And it was these teachings, it was these parables that bothered the Pharisees. It, 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 it caused them to be, to be full of strife and be full of anger because they couldn't understand, they couldn't grasp the concepts that Jesus was putting forth. They said, who is this man coming here talking all this stuff? We run this town. We're the teachers of the law. What is he saying? It doesn't even make sense. But well, why is that? That's because their heart was hard. They didn't have a heart to understand. Yeah. See, the understanding they need was an issue of the heart. Uh -huh. I'm going to read this to you from the same account. It's in Matthew. And it's, I'm going to read it from what's called the New International Reader's Version. That, that dumbs it down for people like me who uh -huh. have a little hard time understanding It says, starting with verse 14 in this same account in Matthew, it says, In them, the parables, the, word, the words of the prophet Isaiah come true. He said, You will hear, but never understand. You will, you will see, but never know what you are seeing. Mm -hmm. Why? The hearts of the people have become stubborn. Yeah. They can barely hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they may be able to see with their eyes. They might be able to hear with their ears. They might be able to understand with their hearts. So what they were suffering from was not a matter of intellect. What they were suffering from was a matter of the heart. The people that wanted this understanding were granted this opportunity because they had a heart to seek for it. See, when we read these scriptures, we read these parables, sometimes we have the misunderstanding that these parables were only broken down to just the twelve. Uh -huh. But this same account in Mark, Mark chapter 4, verse 10 says that when he was alone with his disciples and all those who were with him, it wasn't just his disciples, it was all those that stayed back with the disciples that he gave his understanding to. Yeah. So this, this parable, all of these parables, the understanding that was sought after was sought after by more than just the twelve. It was sought after by all those who had a heart to understand. Yeah. So when Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear, he could have also said, whoever has a heart to understand, let them listen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Saying, I'm saying we pray about our marriage because we know it's the godly thing to do, but we really don't have a heart to hear that. We need to tighten up. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying we pray about not having enough money. We pray, Lord, bless our finances, but we don't have a heart to hear that you're mismanaging your money. We said, Lord, free us from this sin. Free us from this sin. We want to be free. But really, we're enjoying what we're doing too much to have a heart to be free. <laughs> This might be too much for Wednesday. <laughs> teach, teach, teach. You see, this effort to separate, this effort that Jesus did to separate is not a new thing. If you look at the scripture from Genesis through the end, that's a theme that the Lord has. He's always looking to separate those who are really with him from those who aren't. Take an example, look at Abraham. God allowed him to take Isaac all the way to the altar to be sacrificed. Only so at the end of the account he could say, Now Abraham, I know that you fear me. Now I know whose side you're on. He said, Well, I didn't God know before. He knew through his omniscience, but now he knows through experience whose side that Abraham is on. Look at the servant Job. The devil approached God and said, Who can I test? He said, have you considered my servant Job? He allowed Job to lose everything he had but his life. Why? In the effort to divide, in the effort to say that Job is after my heart, not after my stuff. He's after my heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guess what? God hasn't changed. 
He's still in the business of knowing who's after his heart yeah. and who's not. The Lord is saying tonight, I wish that we either hot or cold, but lukewarm, I'll do what? I'll spit you out. <laughs> Too many of us today are still lukewarm in our relationship. We say we want signs, we want miracles, we want wonders, but the Lord is saying, I need you to turn up the heat. <laughs> See, when we go to restaurants and they clean our utensils, we don't want to go somewhere where they just run it under some warm water. <laughs> Preach it, boy. Scientists say that sterilization takes place at a temperature around 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. But God is saying, I need you to turn up the heat so that I can sterilize you with the power of the Holy Spirit so I can step into your situation and work the miracle. Even our own natural bodies. When we experience some type of foreign bacteria, our, our first response is to what? Run a fever. Turn up the heat. Why? In an effort to get that bacteria to keep from growing, in an effort to kill that bacteria. Well, the Lord is saying tonight, I need you to turn up the heat so we can kill off that bacteria so I can step in and change your environment so I can get that, that miracle that you've been asking for. more feel-good message for my first time. <laughs> Could have gave me something on faith or uh, prosperity or something like that. Come on with it. It's a miracle with your name on it. <laughs> but guess what? There is a miracle with your name on it, but it's waiting on you to turn up the heat. <laughs> we think about those on the wayside, our mind usually goes to what? Unbelievers. Right? Yeah. And unbelievers are definitely a part of this group. How many of us got saved two, three, four, ten times? <laughs> Why is that? That's because as soon as we receive the word for salvation, the enemy comes to steal that word. The enemy comes to, to steal that word for salvation because he knows how valuable that word is to us. Yeah. This is why follow-up is so important. This is why we have to help those new believers to really guard their hearts against the wiles of the enemy. Mm. Yeah. This is why that person that you witness to on your job is so important that you follow up with them and help create that environment that's going to help them to grow. Mm. Amen? Amen. But there's also another group of people that fall into this category. And that's those of us that come to church, we hear the word, we shout, we cry, Turn cartwheels. But before we even get home, we've forgotten all about what that word even was. Right, right. <laughs> How many of us have come to church sometimes and taken all the notes in the world and them notes are still there when you come, <laughs> come back next Sunday? <laughs> notes still in the same spot. Why is that? Why, why do we lose track of what the word was? Why do we forget so easily what it was that we were so excited about 15 minutes ago? That's because the enemy is coming in to steal that word. Mm. <clears throat> it's not just because we forget. It's not just because we're being haphazard. But there's a battle going on in the spirit to take that word that you receive because he knows that word that you receive, how it's going to benefit your life. <laughs> so I hear you saying, no, no, the devil is stealing nothing from me. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How many times have you left and you got in your car, and before you know it, you and your spouse is arguing about who left the toilet seat up. <laughs> I almost fell in this one. I forgot to tell you. I almost fell in this morning because you left the toilet seat up. Well, why you ain't make the bed before you left the house? I was going to tell you before service, but I, now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> what is that? That's the enemy's devices. Yeah. He's not just going to come up to haste. Stick you up. Put your hands up and come up for that word. That means spending time in the word. That means spending time learning under the authorized teacher of the word. We must take our time to grow our roots in the Lord so that we're anchored in the time of temptation. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, if you're not in one of those first two groups, I know you're looking around, nodding your head. Mm. I know he ain't got no roots. Look at her, her roots start. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Don't worry, we got a group just for you. <laughs> this third group of us are those who heard the word, mm. but yet go out and are choked with cares, mm. riches, mm. and the pleasures of life. Mm. See, one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to have us either so busy trying to be successful that we don't have time to adequately receive the word, or we're so worried about being unsuccessful that we're too preoccupied in our minds to receive. Mm. Mm. The Bible says the word is choked out by cares or anxieties or worries, you can say. But see, the truth of the matter is most of the stuff that we worry about we can't fix anyway. Mm. Mm -hmm. We worry about not having enough money, or not having enough time, but how I many know worrying this is going to add a second to the clock, nor a dime to your bank account? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, if we really look at it, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it, yeah, I'm going to say it. If we really look at it, <laughs> worrying is a sin. Mm. <laughs> You don't believe me, do you? I'm, I'm going to show you. You'll probably believe me if the Lord said it. So. <laughs> do it. Yeah. 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 The Lord knows your hearts, and it's the important things that are in your heart that he's concerned with. Yeah. Good. Good word. The Bible also says that the word is choked out by the pleasures of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a big one for us. Entertainment is the biggest industry in America. We've got to be careful not to allow television, internet, social media, and all the other things that we do take precedence over becoming firmly rooted in the Lord. See, I'm a big sports fan. Big, big, big sports fan. I could probably stay up, you know, 24 hours all day long watching football and basketball. But as I've grown in the Lord, I have to understand that at some point, I have to turn the TV off. I can't spend all of my time chasing after the next game. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of us men stayed up trying to catch that West Coast game? <laughs> next thing you know, it's 12 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, trying to catch that late game. And we go to bed and wake up in the morning, and our alarm goes off for us to pray. What do we do? Snooze. <laughs> huh? How many of us ladies, we say, oh, I'm going to get to read the word in just a few minutes. I just, I'm going to just finish this show. Next thing you know, three hours have gone by. Housewives of Atlanta have stole all our time. <laughs> Let me move on. We must keep our priorities in check and make sure that our lives are in balance, that we're not spending too much time in the pleasures of life and we're adequately spending time Building our roots. Amen. 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 Now this last group that we mentioned here, these are the ones who bear fruit. This is the group that everybody wants to be a part of. Now when the Bible speaks of bearing fruit in this sense, it's not necessarily speaking of the fruit of the Spirit. The Greek verb for bearing fruit, I see, I told you I was in school then. <laughs> the Greek word for bearing fruit is karkophoria. And that is to bear fruit, which comes from the adjective karkophoros, fruit bearing, fruitful, productive. Mm. So in other words, those who belong to this group, they hear the word, they receive it, and they're what? Productive. Mm. Those that are in this group, they hold on to the word until, the, until it produces the results of the word in their lives. Well, what are some of the results of the word that the word produces? We can go to that next one. Number one, answer prayer. I'll read this to you from John 15, 7 and 8. It says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Yes, sir. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. much fruit. 
See, when we, held, when we hold the word in our hearts, we're better equipped to pray along the will of God. And when we pray along the will of God, our prayers are answered. That's just like if we leave here and you say, you're going to Ruby Tuesdays. And I say, well, I'm going to Ruby Tuesdays too. What am I doing? I'm acting along with your will. So guess what? We're going to Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> so when you line your will up with his will, it's easier for our prayers to be answered. How do we line our will up with his? Studying the word of God. Let's go to that next result that the word produces. Number two is victory over sin. It says in Psalms 1, 19 and 11, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. If we seek the Lord with all, our, with all our heart and fight to hold on to it, we can live a life victorious over sin. Amen. 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 Number three, the third thing is direction. Again, Psalms 119 and 105, it says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hmm. See, the word of God is full of direction. It's full of guidance. And if we meditate on it, God will tailor fit that to meet our specific needs. How many times have we come to church on Sunday and you say, Oh, it sounded like the pastor was just speaking directly to me. He knew exactly what I was thinking. Why? What is that? That's the Lord fitting that word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, right, yes, sir. Right, right, yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. See, the Lord will give us direction. He'll give us everything we need if we stay in the word and we hold on to it in our hearts. Let's look at this last one I have here. Success and prosperity. We can all use a little bit of success and prosperity, right? Amen. Joshua 1 and 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart from, the, from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is according, all, according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. The Lord, the Lord has given us a roadmap to success, both naturally and spiritually. It's all found in his word. We just have to be careful to make his word our number one priority. Yes. Follow the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 